So when we think about who around the world is buying cyber insurance right now, it is correct that probably about 90% of cyber insurance is purchased in the United States. Now the reason for that is that the United States has had regulatory environment which has required notification of data breaches since about 2006. That drove a lot of big class action litigations and therefore big paid insurance claims. So what we saw over the last 10 years or so is that most of the buying behavior and most of the uptake was data privacy driven and it was in the United States where those claims tend to be quite expensive and the reputation hit that a company takes from not having that loss insured is much, much bigger. Now when we think about buying behavior and uptake of cyber insurance outside the United States, it's much less driven by data privacy regulations and of course the, the culture and the environment around litigation is much different. So when we're talking to companies outside the US, it's much more of a holistic conversation about what cyber risk and security means. So that could be everything from data protection issues, which are coming online a little bit more now that the GDPR is coming into play next May. But it's also about how do your systems and your data become resilient? So is that about destruction of data and your ability to recover it from a backup? Is that about industrial control systems, which are operating a factory? If that goes offline, do you have a major business interruption event? And how would you recover from those types of incidents? So it's much less driven by one single issue, and it's much more about how do we protect ourselves from the growing cyber threat, whether that's from state-sponsored actors or even still teenagers in basements, how do we ensure resilience from that kind of event going forward, and is insurance the right option? And what more and more buyers are finding outside the US is that insurers are trying to create more clarity in traditional lines of insurance by adding exclusions, and it's really starting to obviate the need for a standalone cyber policy.